that Chuck Fletcher is an articulate guy. We should have him on the show. Bang! We got him because NHL Network has it like that. Chuck, over your shoulder, you've got the eye fight for Oscar. The whole hockey family was fighting for him. What an emotional moment. You know him up close and personal. 23 years old. How does he handle what he's handled as well as he has? Well, the remarkable thing I think, is he had to go through all this uh, in a pandemic and, and uh, really his access to, you know, teammates and even family and, and even some resources has been certainly uh, compromised uh, during a pandemic. But uh, he's a strong, strong guy, um, was always worried about his teammates during the year, worried about his family, uh, very kind of humbly and courageously took on this battle. and. And uh, it's got to be pretty scary for, for a young man, 22, 23 year old, 22 or 23 years old, to be going through this. And uh, to get to the end here, to, to finish his treatments, to be deemed cancer free, uh, is a tremendous, tremendous feeling for him. And, and uh, you know, now he, I think he's starting to focus on what's next. And, and, you know, we didn't know if we would get to this point, but to even have the ability to think what's next and how can I return to my normal life and hopefully play hockey again. And, uh, so we're all very, very excited for him on a host of levels. Yeah, good for Oscar. It's a great story, and we're uh, very happy for him and, and, and proud of the work he's put in. And what's next for him will eventually be hockey for you. Also hockey, it looks like we finally will have a start date for training camp. What have you been up to the last little while, while hockey-wise, and how do you approach training camp and trying to get your team, which was playing great when we stopped, back up to the level they were at before the break? I hope AV has a good plan for, for getting them going again. But, uh, <laughs> no, we're we're all wondering. I'm sure every team is wondering the same thing. I mean, on the one hand, you're going to have rested and, and probably mostly healthy uh, player groups. Uh, on the other hand, obviously, it would be no different than coming back to camp after a long summer. You're going to have players that have to get uh, get their playing conditioning back, get their timing back, and, and the team that teams that can stay healthy and, and get their timing and, and game conditioning back the quickest will, will be successful. And there's certainly going to be some luck involved here, some randomness, and and uh, it's it's going to be hard to know what to do. But we're we're looking forward to getting our players back. And probably like every team, we've been uh, going through all the details of the phase three and the phase four protocols, which we received a couple of days ago, trying to determine what we can do, who we can bring into the bubble, who we have to bring into the bubble, and. So we're working through those details now. Uh, we have a lot of our players back skating here at our skate zone in Voorhees, New Jersey. And, and uh, so we're, we're excited and ready to go. Chuck, as we kind of get back to the, the new normal, at least the way we're going to close out the 1920 season, the, uh, the initial uh, situation is we're, we're kind of bifurcated into two separate divisions. There's the qualifying round and then your group in Philly part of that top four it's a round robin kind of a seeding round do you see pluses or minuses to being in one of those two different categories pleased to be where you are i would assume as one of the top four yeah i, I mean i think that's exactly it uh, uh you know we'll have to see how what all the games mean but we've we've made the playoffs as of this point we're one of the four teams in, in the east that have made the playoffs so to, to avoid the play-in round, I think is, is is tremendous because obviously we're it means we're in. Uh, in terms of how we approach it, that'll be the interesting thing. We're gonna uh, possibly have one exhibition game here, then three three round robin games, and uh, they're going to be competitive. You're going to want to win those round robin games, but you're also going to want to make sure that uh, uh, you know your players are prepared for for the playoffs when they do start. So um, you know it's going to be interesting to see how we utilize our players and. How many uh, do we play both goalies? Uh, what's what's the rotation going to be? Uh, so there's a lot of questions that we're going to have to work through here. But it, uh, I think clearly the goal for us will be to build up through camp and through the round robin and make sure we're healthy and in the best shape we can be once we, we get to the first round of the playoffs. For the, those of us who aren't as smart as Stu Grimson, bifurcate means to divide into two branches or forks. <laughs> Thankful I was able to look that up. Unbelievable. The guy, I think Steve I even used it amazing. in context, Tony. Brilliant. Brilliant. Also brilliant, the Philadelphia Flyers, Chuck, this year, against the 12 teams that advanced to the postseason from the Eastern Conference, the best points percentage. What a year for your team. What a year for Elaine Vigneault. As you look back on it and look forward to the playoffs, what was the biggest reason your team was this good this year? 
It was the ability for us to keep the puck out of our net. Uh, last year, we were one of the worst defensive teams in the league, and this year we were one of the better teams. So, it, you know, I think offensively we're, uh, we're a good team. Certainly have, we have a lot of skill. Our, our specialty teams both uh, uh, were very strong, particularly at the pause. Uh, we had been very strong for about two months in specialty teams. But, but the biggest thing, again, uh, our attention to detail, our willingness to buy into the structure that the coaches put in, uh, you know, was just was just tremendous for, uh, you know, for our group. And uh, when you're giving up two goals a game instead of three goals a game, it makes it a lot easier to win. And that was the big difference this season from last season. Uh, Chuck, we talked about Carter Hart for a long time. We marveled at the numbers he put up in junior. We talked about Philadelphia's long-standing search for a true number one and that he appeared to be the guy. Are you pleased to go along with those goals against at his development and confident that he's taken the steps necessary to, to not only be good, now in the regular season, but also on into the playoffs. Yeah, Mike. You know his his consistency, his composure for for a young player. Never mind a young mm -hmm. goaltender is, is tremendous. And when he did have a rough game or a rough uh, stretch this season, his ability to bounce back and, and to refocus and and to come back strong was uncanny. And you often see that in veteran players and veteran goaltenders, but for a 21 year old player to to be able to reset like he does, to refocus and uh, is great. He, he's earned the trust of his teammates and, and everybody here in this community. But, you know, hey, this will be another uh, another new challenge for him. Uh, first time uh, playing playoff hockey in, in the National Hockey League. And, you know, and it's uh, the stakes are higher. Things get ramped up and it's a different level of competition. And when you throw in that we're coming off a four month pause and jumping right into it, it's going to be interesting to see how everybody reacts, never mind our, our goaltender. But mentally, I know he'll be ready and, and hopefully uh, we can help him do a great job. One thing we neglected to mention was that the GM of the Flyers did a great job and helped them have this special year. Chuck Fletcher, thanks so much for joining us, and good luck in the postseason. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thanks for having me on.